Thank you for the privilege of being able to bring the gospel this evening. I would like to read with you Lord's Day 26. It is our confessional reading. Matt, there's no special details here. I just read it, correct? Okay. I won't sing it then. Lord's Day 26, uh, so, yeah, Lord's Day 26 um, it teaches us about baptism. Uh, there are two Lord's Days about baptism, and I'm just reading the first. How does holy baptism signify and seal to you that the one sacrifice of Christ on the cross benefits you? In this way, Christ instituted this outward washing, and with it gave the promise that as surely as water washes away the dirt from the body, so certainly his blood and spirit wash away all the impurity of my soul, that is, all my sins. What does it mean to be washed with Christ's blood and spirit? To be washed with Christ's blood means to receive forgiveness of sins from God through grace because of Christ's blood poured out for us by his sacrifice on the cross. To be washed with his spirit means to be renewed by the Holy Spirit and sanctified to be members of Christ so that more and more we become dead to sin and lead a holy and blameless life. Where has Christ promised that he will wash us with his blood and spirit as surely as we are washed with the water of baptism? In the institution of baptism, where he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19. Further, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 16. This promise is repeated where baptism calls baptism the washing of regeneration and the washing away of sins. That's from Titus 3, 5. In Acts 22, 16. That is our confessional reading. In order that we may uh, ground the message in Scripture from the Bible, I would like to read a few verses from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verse 40 to the end of the chapter, where we read a very beautiful incident in the ministry of Jesus. So this is Mark chapter 1, therefore it is a, an event very early in his public ministry. There we read, A man with leprosy came to him, Jesus, and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing. He said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning, see that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet, the people still came to him from everywhere. The uh, title for the message this evening is, You Need to Wash Before You Can Come In. My mama was a fierce defender of the cleanliness of her home. Before you could come into the house, she was standing guard at the back door. Take off your boots and make sure you remove your shoes. And uh, go straight to the tap and wash your hands. And um, that, was, that was an important um, thing for my mom. Uh, because we lived on a chicken farm, and she wanted to make sure we weren't trampling manure 
into the house. She was very vigilant about this. My father, that is my father in heaven, my father in heaven is just as vigilant as you could, if you could imagine that, or if I could imagine that. As a matter of fact, he's more vigilant. He will not have us tramping dirt into his kingdom and into his holy presence. The, the prophets, especially in the Old Testament, taught this repeatedly. I think, for instance, of Leviticus chapter 16, where you have a, a ceremony described. It's called the Day of Atonement. And it was a day that was devoted to scrubbing the sanctuary completely clean from every speck of impurity and every stain of dirt. Of course, it was especially pointing toward the removal of any filth, any spiritual filth. That was um, Leviticus chapter 16, the sanctuary of God had to be cleansed and kept clean. I think of Isaiah chapter 6 as well, where we are taught something similar. There you have the angels of God standing around the, the, the throne of God. This is something that Isaiah is granted to see by a vision. And he sees the angels, and they're they're almost fierce in their defense of the purity and spotlessness of God. And they're singing a song, and they're singing with such passion and such vigor that the doorposts and the, and the, the, the door sill of the entrance into the presence of God or into, the, into heaven is, is quaking with the sound of their singing. And what they're singing is, is this famous song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, is Yahweh God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. In Habakkuk, he also uh, accentuates this teaching that the purity of God is so incredibly important. He's the one that says famously, this is what Habakkuk remains fa famous for. He says in his, one of his opening verses in verse 3, he says, the eyes of God are too pure to behold anything unclean. The opening miracle in, described in person in the gospel according to Mark draws attention to this matter. We read about a man who came into the, to Jesus who suffered leprosy. He was suffering from just an awful disease. Leprosy was the type of disease that made a person die on the outside. Leprosy is a disease that, um, which attack the nervous and the blood supply systems so that the extremities of the body, like the fingertips and, and the toes, and a person's nose and his ears, his elbows, these extremities of the body, they would, they would lose their feeling and they would lose their blood supply, so they would lose nourishment. Consequently, those parts of the body began to die and decompose. It was a terrible, terrible disease. A person dying on the outside. It was almost impossible, they say, to tolerate the presence of a, leprous, of a person suffering from leprosy whose disease was somewhat advanced. It was almost impossible to tolerate them to be anywhere near you because of the horrible smell that came off of them. 
this disease graphically demonstrated in an outward fashion the inward condition that we all suffer from. Because Jesus himself says it's from inside that these horrible, putrid things are residing. It's inside that we have sinful thoughts that, that are just so intolerable to a holy person like God. Now this poor man, he, he came to Jesus and he says, if you can, you can make me clean. And it, it, it's important for us to note that he doesn't ask Jesus, if you can, you can, you can heal me. What this man wanted was not healing. Of course, he would love to be healed. But the word he chooses is, expresses what is on his heart. What he wants is to be made clean. Because his uncleanness, his disease, rendered him unfit for the heavenly community and the earthly community. He wanted to be, he wanted to be cleansed. Now, to be clean, to be, to be made clean didn't mean in that culture and in that religious context of ancient Israel, in that context to be made clean didn't mean to, to experience something hygienic. It was religious language. It, it was a, what a person needed to be in order to enter into the, the presence of God. You have to be clean to come before Him. And there were certain things almost inevitable, in fact, definitely inevitable in daily, in, in simple human life that, that made a person from time to time unclean. If you went to a funeral and you came near a dead body, touched a dead body, you became unclean. If a, if a woman had a baby, she became unclean. If you, if you got a skin disease, like leprosy, you became unclean. And somebody unclean lost the privilege of coming into the presence of God. You could not go to the temple. You could not do what we're doing right now. You could not be part of a, a worshiping community. You lost that privilege. You couldn't offer a gift to God at his altar. And you could not receive a blessing from the priest. This man who comes to Jesus, he, he had been unclean as for as long as he had this disease. And what he missed most was not his health, as bad as that was. What he missed was his God. And that's why he comes to Jesus and he says, if you, want, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And note too, he, he says to Jesus, if you are willing... This man has come to know about Jesus' reputation. Um, already early in the, earlier on in this chapter, we have, in chapter 1, he, we have instances described. We're not instances, but in general, Mark tells us, Jesus healed many people of all their diseases, and he cast out their demons, and he healed their sick. Jesus had very quickly developed a reputation for being in a very powerful administrator of the, of the healing power of God, restoring people in various ways. And so he knew that Jesus had the power to heal him. He trusted and he believed in that. But what he doesn't know right now is if Jesus was willing. I know you can, but I don't know if you care, he said. 
It's the kind of question, is if you are willing, you can cleanse me. It's the kind of question that a person asks who has suffered too much rejection. God has rejected him. Society rejects him. Jesus, will you reject me too? I know you can, he says. But do you care? Mark 141, filled with compassion. As Jesus' response, he's filled with compassion for this man. The Greek language has beautiful ways of expressing emotion. And, and this word, compassion, uh, it's, a, it's a really um, physi physiological way of describing an emotion. It's like his guts are twisting inside him as he looks upon this man and feels so much, so much pity for him. And then Jesus did something nobody had done for this man for a very long time. He reaches out and he touches him. He touches him. And he says, I am. Be clean. And then the man is healed. He is healed because Jesus put his hand on him. And by putting his hand on him, the law says Jesus now joins him in his uncleanness. I'm so surprised when I read the commentaries, all of them, without fail, all of them say, well, Jesus doesn't become unclean when he touches the leper because because he's God, he's, he's, the, he's the Holy One. But, but Jesus does not get any privilege that is not accessible to us. Any other person who touches an unclean person like a leper becomes by that fact unclean. And Jesus, by touching that man, becomes unclean. There's a transfer which takes place. As happens every time that Jesus heals somebody, every healing that Jesus performs, and every cleansing that he accomplishes, and every demon that he possesses, that he, that he casts out, is a transfer from the person to Jesus. Jesus takes on that disease Jesus takes on that demon. Jesus takes on that uncleanness. Matthew, in order to make sure that we understand this, he, he's, he writes immediately after, in the very next paragraph, after he describes the cleansing of this, of this leper, Matthew tells us that he took our diseases and carried our sorrows. And that's what he does for this leper, for this man. <clears throat> he takes on his uncleanness. He takes on his leprosy. So that now this person, Jesus, becomes vulnerable to the abandonment of God. A condition which finally fell upon him with all the forces of the darkness of hell as he hangs on the cross. And in the darkness, he cries out because of his abandonment. Now, to confirm that this wonderful event when Jesus touches this man and says, I am, be clean, to confirm what it's all about. It's not about healing. It's about restoring a person to enter into the presence of God cleansed because that's the condition necessary for any person to come before God. Jesus tells the man, go to the temple, offer the sacrifices necessary that the law of Moses requires, and the priests there will, will declare you clean. 
Go to the temple. Enjoy your God. Enjoy him like everyone else. You are clean. You can go to church. You can offer sacrifices. You can stand with your brothers and sisters, and you can receive God's blessing. And so he did. He was restored by the mercy of Jesus. He was cleansed in order that he might go in. It's a, it's a really beautiful miracle. I just love reading the story about the Jesus healing the leper early in the gospel narratives. And this, this has so much to teach us in a, in a really impactful way. It has so much to teach us about baptism. In answer 69 of the Heidelberg Catechism, it, it had, the catechism had asked, what does holy baptism signify and seal to us? Or how does it signify and seal to, you, to us that the one sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross benefits us? And it, it, the answer to the catechism says, just, you know, baptism is a water uh, ceremony. Water is sprinkled or a person goes into, into, into a pool of water it's a water rite in which water is, is used to, we are, we, are, we are reminded, water is used in order to wash dirt away from our body. If we didn't have the access to water to wash our bodies, you know, this would be a pretty smelly place. <laughs> but, but we have that privilege. We can wash our bodies, and baptism uses that that action in order to symbolize a spiritual reality just as water washes dirt from our body. And just in that same way, the blood and spirit of Jesus Christ washes us inwardly, washes my soul of every impurity. That is all my sin. So that now, now that I'm baptized, I'm clean, I can go in. I can meet my God. We need to realize that enjoying the friendship of God is, is not a human right. It's, it's a privilege that's granted to us, and it's granted only to those who have faith in Jesus Christ and who are therefore cleansed by His blood and Spirit. Perhaps you're sitting here this evening, you're in, enjoying the music, you feel lifted up by the prayer that Matt had offered, you delight to hear about Jesus and it's just, it's so beautiful. But maybe you're not baptized. Jesus cares about these details. We might think, you know, I love Jesus, that's enough. But Jesus cares about details. He, he tells this man, it's Jesus that does it. He says, the law requires that you go to the temple, you offer the sacrifice, and you be declared clean. Jesus cares about the details. He, he wants us to follow the prescriptions. He wants our heart, he wants us to love him, but he also wants us to do the things which love for him requires of us. The story of the leper is a beautiful story about how important baptism is. To be washed by Jesus, to be touched by him and have all our uncleanness taken away from us, to be granted that privilege because you're baptized in the name of Jesus and the Father and the, and the Holy Spirit, to be granted that privilege. Yes, you can come in. This is your home. This is where you belong with God's people. And with your creator, be 
because of Jesus' blood and spirit. He really wants you. And by touching this man, he, he teaches us he's willing to accept any transfer. Whatever is on you, he's going to transfer it on himself. And he can purify you, taking away everything that prevents you from entering into the place of eternal joy. He did it for this man, and he wants to do it for you. Don't neglect this beautiful gift. If you haven't been baptized, ask for it. Ask the church for it. If you have been baptized, cherish this amazing gift and give thanks daily to God for what you have, cleanness in Jesus. Your father, he's very vigilant about his presence. And he wants you to be there through Jesus Christ. Amen.